Hi, and welcome to my video. My name is Jessica, and I'm going to be teaching you all today ways that you can incorporate STEM into your daily activities at home with your little ones. Here are three tips that you can do to incorporate STEM education into your daily activities. But first, what is STEM? STEM is a transdisciplinary approach to teaching science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But what does this mean? This means that when we are teaching science, we are also teaching math, engineering, and technology. We are applying these subjects to real-world scenarios. But how do we do this? Well, one activity is through baking and cooking. When we bake with our little ones, we are naturally teaching them metrics and fractions. Another way is when we are out in nature. Get your little ones to explore nature like scientists, asking questions about the phenomena around us. Did you put your seed in there? And then what did you do? Did you put soil on top? Yeah. You did? And then what did you do? I put some soil and then dig it up and put it in there and then I and put it back in. The next activity is getting your little ones to think like engineers. Here's a book that gives you a perfect example of what I mean. The Most Magnificent Thing by Ashley Spires. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things, he unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They're shocked to discover that their thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It is all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try it again. The girl saws, glues, and adjusts. She stands and examines and steers. She twists, tweaks, and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square, she makes it round, she gives it legs, she adds an antenna, she makes it fuzzy, she makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. One even smells of stinky cheese, but none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing she has in her mind. She gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She pummels little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work, and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only the thing would just work. Crunch. The pain starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she just explodes. It's not her finest moment. I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. It's not much help at first, but before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mat gets pushed out of her head. As they stroll along, 
she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then, she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the magnificent thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. The afternoon fades into the evening. Finally, she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good, long look. It leans a little to the left, and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. What an amazing book. I love the special messages in this book about letting our little ones make mistakes and learning from our mistakes, just like the little girl in the book did. Another component of this book that I love is how she really is going through the engineering design process that I mentioned earlier. How we as educators teach the little ones about engineering is through a process called the engineering design process, which I am going to explain through an activity that I've done with my little one. More details on the activity will be in the description box below. The website, the link to my website will have all of the resources that you will need to complete this activity. So I encourage you to do this activity with your little one at home. Here it is. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have a printout of our engineering design process. This process is what we're going to use to build our, ta our castle. You want to make sure that you first, you ask questions. So what's the problem that we want to solve? And the problem is that we want to make a castle that is 25 centimeters tall. We are only going to be able to use 40 marshmallows, 40 toothpicks, and you're going to build it over jello.